What you're looking at is the Vario D45 D12, a wonderfully done clean and compact field watch which was inspired by the infamous Dirty Dozen watches of World War II. If you're not familiar with the Dirty Dozen, you really should be. The short version is that when gearing up for World War II, the British Ministry of Defense devised a loose set of specs and criteria for what would be a good purpose-built field watch, which they gave to a dozen different Swiss companies to build for their troops. The end result was 12 watches, all with a similar feel, yet all slightly different. Decades later, after Lee Marvin was done kicking some ass, they became known as the Dirty Dozen. Over the years, there have been a lot of close homages to those original Dirty Dozens, but what Vario is doing here is a little bit different. This is more of a modern reinterpretation, which if you know anything about Vario, isn't really surprising. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Vario is one of my favorite micro brands, partially because Ivan doesn't really want to make the same exact watch everyone else has, which is why Vario still doesn't have a diver. Rather, he wants to put his own spin on things and create something that really stands out in a crowd. Now, before I get into it, I should point out that this watch was provided to the channel and I don't have to send it back, hence that promotional tag at the beginning. But as usual, that won't affect my opinion. That out of the way, let's talk specs. For that, you're looking at a 37mm case with a lug to lug of 45, along with a fairly thin profile of 11mm. And that, right there, is one of the main things that's going to attract those looking for a smaller field watch, especially those with slender wrists. And even on my 7.25 inch wrist, it's a great fit. Comfortable, lightweight, and easy to read with a subtle presence. Especially on the straps Vario provided with this one. Speaking of which, lug width is 18mm, so there are plenty of aftermarket strap options out there. This one also has a flat sapphire crystal with plenty of AR, as well as a closed screw down case back with a little bit of a creative nod to the soldiers of both the past and present. Water resistance is 100 meters, and that is with a screw down crown, one that is complete with a loomed branding. And all of this is powered by a Miyota 82S5, which is basically an 8000 series Miyota with a small seconds. And since this is a Miyota, that also means that the rotor here is going to be a little bit noisier than others. When it comes to the design, the case here is pretty straightforward, but there are a couple of really nice touches I love, like the drilled lugs, always a good thing, or the slim polished chamfers on either side, highlighting the overall case shape, as well as the multifaceted bezel where the sides have a mirror finish, but the top is flattened out with a circular brushing. It's a really cool touch that winds up catching your eyes when the watch is moving around, as well as creates a border for the dial, Yet at the same time, it doesn't look too flashy when you look at the watch straight on. Overall, it still has a very tool watch feel to it. And then of course there is the recessed angled crown, which is not necessarily anything new, Seiko does this all the time. But notice here that it's more of an extreme than a Seiko. It's way past the four, and they wound up carving a bit out of one of the lugs just to create a notch for it. For some, I think this may look a little bit odd. But if you've ever had an issue with the crown hitting the back of your wrist, guarantee this one won't do that, as well as it gives it a great streamlined look. Now of course, if you have fatter fingers, this is going to cause an issue when you try to use it, but personally I never really had a problem with that, and I like how it turned out. Plus, as I mentioned before, the crown is loomed, which looks really cool when the lights go out. Moving on to the dial. And for the most part, the dial here is a very dirty dozen. Like with the small seconds, the Arabic spread throughout, and a detailed train track chapter ring on the edge. However, this isn't a straight copy, and Ivan added a few interesting twists, such as the Flieger-like triangle at the top, which honestly seems like something that should have always been there. And then there's also this very interesting matte textured dial, rather than the flat or glossy black. Which, if I'm being honest, is something I typically prefer on a military style watch, something more of a piano glossy black, like what Vario has done with her other new watch, the D12, which is another review I'm working on. But the textured dial here gives this one a very interesting and modern look, as well as separates it out from a lot of the other Dirty Dozen homages. And the texture along the small second sub dial, I think adds just a little bit of needed depth to what is otherwise a flat design. It also lets Vario experiment with the logo, which is here at the very top. 
sort of etched into that texture. It's very subtle, and at first glance you might have even missed it. It's kind of a bold move, which lets the dial and the design really speak for itself. Again, at first glance, this watch is all about the design and the functionality, which is really what a field watch is truly about. So while it doesn't necessarily follow that classic formula to a T, I think it's got the same spirit as those original watches. And I especially like the black framing of the hands, as they really come through against the beige background. It's a great and interesting take on the Dirty Dozen. However, there are of course a few nitpicks here as well. And my biggest one is that every colorway employs an old radium luminous paint for the hands and the indices. And as I've shown time and time again, that old radium or fadium basically sucks when it comes to loom. And we'll talk more about this in a second. The other thing is that while I think the hands pop out nicely against the dial, the very thin pencil styling does appear a little small and perhaps a little thin compared to everything, especially with the very clean, almost sterile looking dial. I think they could have gone with something else or maybe something a little wider or longer to help give it a little bit of balance. Although to be fair and at the same time, maybe they couldn't because if you didn't use a slim pencil handset, it really wouldn't be a dirty dozen. As for the loom, loom is okay for what it is. Just the dial and main hands are loomed, not the sub second hand. And the crown here is also loomed, which is really cool. But other than that, the dial is fairly standard. And in my longevity tests, it lasted just about as long as a Vostok Amphibia, which overall I do consider to be okay for at least a non-diver. As a loom nut, I obviously want some more here, but for what it is, it's okay. However, when it comes to the strap, the strap is great. It comes on this black Cordura strap with reinforced riveted holes, a great buckle, and quick release. Vario started out, and I'd say is still primarily a strap company. So when you're buying one of their watches, you can be assured the strap is good. Value is perhaps the one tricky part here, sort of. I think for what you're getting, the materials, the original design, the level of care and finish that went into it, I think 368 is very reasonable. However, if all you're interested in is a Dirty Dozen homage, and not specifically this one, something more classic or something that doesn't have the quality this Vario has, then there are a number of cheaper options out there on AliExpress. Honestly, too many to mention. And some are going to be better than others, but you got options. Bottom line, it's a great modern take on the classic Dirty Dozen formula. It still has the same purpose-built feel, but with some nicer modern refinements for those of us who are storming the break room or maybe an airport lounge and not the beaches of Normandy. And I especially love just how clean and streamlined the dial looks, despite all the complexity of the train track chapter ring and sub second hand. As far as field watches go, this is a pretty clean feel. But what do you think about it? As usual, let me know down below. And if you can think of another watch that may do it better, tell me that as well. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit some button down below. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.